All right, on to lesson one. This is unit two, lesson one, the practice problems. Number one says, which one of these shapes is not like the others? Explain what makes it different by representing each width and height pair with a ratio. Okay, so these are all ovals. They're not circles, because circles are exactly as wide as they are tall, you know, they have the equidistant from the middle, but um, they're ovals. And the thing that I kind of see here is like, you know, they, they look like they have a width and they have a height. They have differing widths and heights, if you think of it that way, because it looks a little stretched out, like it's a circle that was sat on, you know? So I see it, like for instance, like, it, like it's like in a box, you know, not a square box, but just box and that box right there that's that's four units right there and this is five okay so that has if I just look at the ratios that has a four to five ratio right there I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna do the same thing for this one so I've got right here I'm stopping there because I'm looking I'm looking at that part There. All right, so then when we count these, count these, we got two, four, six, eight, ten. So this is ten, and this is two, four, six, eight. Okay, and so that is not four to five, right? That, that's not. That's eight to ten. No. That is 4 to 5, because we can reduce it. We can simplify it. Divide 8 by 2 and divide 10 by 2. Guess what you get? You get 4 to 5. So A and B definitely are a pair. Those definitely belong. So it's probably C, but let's confirm it. Okay, let's confirm why C. And he may have just known it was C just by looking at it. But again, that's, that's not a good enough explanation. You can't just say it looks off, you know? even though that, that sometimes can cut up for some explanations, but not for this one. We have to be able to give a good mathematical reasoning, especially when it says express it as a ratio. So I'm betting that this does not come out to a ratio of four to five, right? Bet your bottom dollar. We got right here, here. So if I look at the links there, this is, that's three, six, nine, ten. That's ten right there, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so that has a that is a six to ten ratio. Now, when we simplify that by dividing it by two, three divided six divided by three, pardon me, six divided by two is three, and ten divided by two is five. So that's that's the one that does not belong. It's pretty close, isn't it? But it's not, it does not belong. So we'll see. All right, for number two, it says, in one version of a trail mix, there are three cups of peanuts mixed with two cups of raisins. In another version of trail mix, there's four and a half cups of peanuts mixed with three cups of raisins. Are the ratios equivalent for um, the two mixes. Explain your reasoning. Okay, so for this one, um, I th what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of this as like, because ratios can be write, written a few different ways. I'm going to write this ratio as a fraction. So I'm going to put three for peanuts on top. I'm going to put two on the bottom. You know, just three to two. Now that, um, that could not be, you know, if I'm trying to simplify a fraction, because that's, you, you typically would like to have fractions in lowest terms, that is simplified. I know that can be turned into a mixed number, like one and a half, but I'm going to leave it that. I'm going to leave it improper. That's going to be okay. Now we've got the other one. We've got four and a half. We've got four and a half peanuts, cups of peanuts, you know, over three cups of raisins. Now I'm just looking at that, you're like, no way. It doesn't look right. But that's, that's because you got a decimal in there, that's, that's ugly. You don't really want to have decimals and fractions. That is usually a bad sight. Okay, now four and a half. Four and a half, because I just said it. It's, you know, that's a mixed number. 
So I can think of that as four and a half like that. Now what I have is I have a, a complex fraction. Complex fraction. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to change four and a half to a improper fraction. Four and a half change to improper. So four times two, two times four is eight. Plus one makes nine. So that's nine halves right there. So you got nine halves over three. All right, again, that does not look like three over two, right? That does not look like three over two. But we're not done with it. It's still in complex form. So fractions, you know, fractions are nothing but division problems, right? Top number divided by the bottom number. Numerator divided by the denominator. Top divided by bottom. So let's see what happens when we do 9 halves divided by 3. I'm going to write 3 over 1. So 9 halves divided by 3. So I'm going to do the keep change flip a rooney here. And 9 halves, so you're going to keep 9 halves the way it is. Change division into multiplication. And then flip this. So that's 1 third. And then you get 9 over 6. It's still not 3 over 2, but wait. But wait, we can simplify this, can't we? We can simplify this. 9 and 6 both can be divided by 3. And what do we end up with? We end up with 3 halves. I know that was kind of complicated. I could have probably done that a different way. You might have found a different way, but that's the way I did it. So if you did it differently, fine. That's great. But that's kind of the way my mind wrapped around it. Uh, so we got 3 halves. So yes. Those are equivalent ratios. They're equivalent ratios. Uh, but it's, it's a little tricky. It's a little tricky when you have a decimal mix into a um, fraction. And you don't typically see that. It's a complex fraction. You gotta get rid of it. All right, for question number three, it says, for each object, choose an, uh, an appropriate scale for drawing that fits on a regular sheet of paper. So eight and a half by 11. So we want we want to make sure it fits on a piece of paper. All right, not all scales on the list will be used. Yeah, there's definitely more scales than there are questions or objects or whatever. So for A, a person, a person. Um, oh, you know, I think it's already lined up with it. I don't think that's I don't think that's true for all of them. But I would, I think for sure, right here, a person. Yeah, one inch is equal to one foot. You know, most people, you know, the average height is like five foot ten. You know, tall people are over six feet. Really, really tall people are over seven feet. So that still would be seven inches, even if you have a really, really tall person. So that would fit on a piece of paper nicely. Okay, so we're done with A. All right. What else do we see here? Um, I'm going to go down, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go down to D. The floor plan of a house. The thing that kind of sticks out for me for this, for the floor plan of the house is this one. That, I'm going to use kind of some deductive reasoning here, but one centimeter equaling one meter in the house would make sense. Because one meter is about three feet, and let's say the room is 12 feet wide or something, and yeah, that's that's easily going to fit on the piece of paper. Four, that would be four centimeters. So, anyhow, uh, what do we got here? Or not? That'd be what did I say? 12 centimeters, not four centimeters. Uh, okay, so the the other stuff is those are big. Like football field's pretty big. Farm is bigger, it's a lot bigger, and uh, a whole U.S. state, the state of Washington, is going to be that. So I'm betting it's one of these three. So, um, so I'm betting it's one of these. See these right here. So the biggest thing that is listed there is the state of Washington, 240 miles by 360 miles. Because when you're dealing with huge objects, like a state, like a US state, like Washington or Texas or something like that, 
you got to be able to fit it on a piece of paper. And so you want really, you want really big things to equal really small things. You want to be able to fit those on there. So I am going to match up, and I, I think some of these are up for discussion too. But I would bet that C goes with this one right here. All right, and then the football field is out of those three things, like the smallest big thing, you know? So I'm betting that would be the one to a thousand. Right there, hopefully I'm not confusing you with my crazy arrows. And I guess I kind of erased it, didn't I? Right there, all right, and then what else we got? Um, farm, we got the farm. And the farm is going to be right here. For number four, which scale is equivalent to one centimeter to one kilometer? One centimeter to one kilometer. So uh, I think that's kind of tricky about this one is that none of those choices, A, B, C, D, or E, are there's no units given. It doesn't say one centimeter to a thousand something, but there's basic numbers, but um, we would assume that those numbers are the same. So what I would do, what I would do here is let's convert. Let's do that. Let's convert kilometers. Let's convert kilometers to centimeters. Let's figure out how many that is. Now we haven't done like dimensional analysis or conversion of units. We haven't done that, so let's just kind of break this down intuitively. Um, now, one kilometer is equal to a thousand meters. Okay, a thousand meters. All right. I also know that one meter is equal to a uh, hundred centimeters. All right. One meter equals a hundred centimeters, and so one kilometer would be a thousand hundreds, thousand hundreds, which is a hundred thousand. That's a thousand times one hundred, which is going to be one hundred thousand, and it, that has got to be C. That's got to be C, not D. D would be the other one switched around. For number five, it says five, find three different ratios that are equivalent to seven to three. Okay. Uh, so I'm just gonna start with seven over three, or seven to three, like this, the way it's written. And let's say I just use a scale factor of two. So just seven times two, three times two. Seven times two is 14. 3 times 2 is 6. All right, let's say I do 10. Let's say I use a scale factor of 10. Doing a scale factor of 10 is pretty easy because I just add a 0. So 7 times 10 is 70. 3 times 10 is 30. You know, and uh, let's say I went the other way. Let's say I went the other way. Let's say I divided by 2. Divided by 2. Um, so half of 7, half of 7 is... Um, three and a half, so 3.5, and then half of three is 1.5. That's kind of ugly looking, but it still works. It's, they're, they're all equivalent ratios, even though we got some decimals mixed in there. And, uh, you know, the reason that they're equivalent is because they all, you know, when you multiply by the same number here, you know, times two here, you, you get um, 14 and six, Now when we do times 10 here and here, we get those numbers, and that works. So it's not like a, like a, let's say I had like a 21, let's say I had like 21 and 6, you know, something like that. And I can show you why that doesn't work, because 7 times 3, 7 times 3 is 21. 3 times 3 is nine, not six. So 
if you put six down, maybe that person thought like, well, three plus three is the same. No, it's not the same. So I couldn't, I couldn't use that. Okay, that's it.